we encounter a lot of challenges such as racism such as have you encountered any racism personally and, yes uh, I, I i have uh, remember i play in italy where it's it's almost like the the house of of, of racism when it comes to football but um but when you say the racism teams that i've played for what have you experienced personally what kind of racism is it somebody monkeying you throwing a banana at you does it happen <laughs> in everyday life or does it happen on the field um i would say when i first arrived it would be the treatment that you get you know i was the only black player in the in the team when mm. i arrived firstly in italy mm. so they would want to give you those looks to see what do you know what you're doing mm. how do you eat uh, how do you handle the things that you eat with and when you go to the shops they follow you around as if you are there to steal you know they don't think you have the money to be getting into the shops if you sit guma bus or guma train they shift just because you are you are black mm. but if someone else comes and shift next to that person who's a different color skin they they would they wouldn't shift so it's a it's a it's a different thing to 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 encounter and you need to be strong also when you encounter such because it's not easy thank you so much for the touchdown they do it again uh, tomorrow between three and six that what you've just heard now on sports that amplified with andile and welcome to it by the way it's the mighty metro fm i'm just a little emotional i'm a little emotional a little touched because we send our brothers our sisters our children our family members and and we speak so often about why don't you play overseas why don't you want better for yourself overseas that what you've just heard there relaying her story of her experience in italy is banana banana captain rafilo john right she's speaking about her experience in italy and the racism that she had to endure but because she wants better for herself, for her children, for her family, for her grandkids, for whatever it is that she works hard for, she endures it. But what I saw over the last 24 hours, and we're going to go to Italy, we're going to make a phone call to a man who is close. By close, I mean a man who would have been one of the first people to call Victor Osimeni. Victor Osimeni is a Nigerian Napoli striker and and this is why this one cuts deeper than every racism taunt we've ever seen. His own team, Napoli, his own team, decided that they are going to make a mockery of him, racially so, on TikTok. They are going to post him and make him the laughingstock. If you haven't seen it, go into social media. They've tried to delete it. They've tried to remove it. But his own team, racially taunting him on social media posting on the official and it's not just posting something they had to create that whole thing and posted it we'll get into that um but also we've got a great interview that we've got uh, up front with george malulega amazulu defender i'll give you the chiefs starting 11 the sundown starting 11 as well as uh, sikukune starting 11 as well for the matches kicking off soon. i've got the starting 11 of kaza chiefs in front of me we'll be reading that out uh, to you as well of course as kukune united Stellenbosch and mandari sundowns who are all in action at a half past seven this evening uh, i do see that the coach has rewarded some performances uh, one particular performance from the game against Sundowns over the weekend. But there's uh, there's one that the, all the fans are asking big questions about. We'll get into that as well. My rant a little bit earlier will culminate in a call to Omar Okaktugba. We've uh, called Omar Okaktugba many a times. Yeah, he's a friend of the show. He's all the way in Italy. And I'm pretty sure if he's not with Victor Osimeni, he must be near him or on his way to him. Very good friends with him. And he was just as touched. But also, over and above being friends with Victor, he's a UEFA journalist and a founder of Oma Sports. When you go to Europe and you want an African uh, journalist, there's no one who's got a bigger black book than Omar Kaktugba. We're going to go to him. He'll tell us about what transpired in Napoli. For your own team, imagine when Ako Spanning here at Metro social media, good TikTok, a video that offends me, racially offends me. This is a club. So the culture of racism, the culture of racism goes way worse than what we just heard from Rafila Jani in her experience. It is entrenched in the blood of who they are in Napoli. If this is how they're going to treat their very own, a man who's done so much for them, We'll get into that conversation right now, though. Speaking to uh, another friend of the room and a favorite here um, on Sports That Amplified with Andy Lengube. It's Amazulu midfielder George Malulega who joins us now on the line. George Mido, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the show. Andy, thank you for having me. Uh, good evening to you and uh, listeners. 
George, we don't know him. We don't know him. So, we don't know him. So, I get even more worried uh, when you don't pick up your phone. Uh, I think maybe. So, this is me shouting at you. I'm not shouting at you. I'm not shouting at you. What's going on? No, man, I'm, I'm around. It's just been a bit hectic. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back. I'm back in a, in a flash. Because you must understand, Mido, when, when, when something happens to you, whether you're playing or you're training, and then word gets out that, no, this is not the first time this is happening to Mido, then we get worried because we've seen cases of people with heart problems, with all sorts of problems on the field, Mido. And, you know, th- th- there's such a love for you in this country. And be, be, be beyond football, there's life to be played. Definitely. Um, I think... Uh, at first, I, I did not uh, take it very seriously, but uh, I did go for armor tests and everything that had happened. And everything came back okay. I still have more tests to do. So, But the one yeah, I really am okay. I'm good. I'm good to, to, to play. And um, I'm healthy, man. I'm fit. I'm ready. I'm and okay. this, this I'm good to play is not per your heart's wanting, but per doctors saying we're not finding anything uh, that could possibly infringe on your life. Doctors are giving you the go-ahead. Correct. That is correct. I've been given the go-ahead. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm a test abuile. They, they were good. And the doctors were happy to, to, to let me play again. So um, I'm okay. I'm really healthy and I'm in good spirit. You, you, you've been in Amazulu during a, a, a period of transition. You know, you had a coach that came in. Um, I, I said this on the air. I interviewed the coach. I looked at what the coach had done before. And I'm talking about uh, Romain Falls. Uh, yes. When he got there, I said it on the air here to say, I, I wonder what he's going to do. Because I'm, I even said it to, you, to, to, to the president, in fact, to say, uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm wondering why a man like that has been hired at a club like that. Because credibility-wise... I'm not seeing anything that makes him credible to coach a team in the DSTV Premiership. I'm not seeing anything that says this man is fit to take care of players like Mido. You were part of that team up until the coach left. What, what, what is your recollection of his tenure? I think, uh, to be honest, uh, Andy, uh, I had a really good relationship with the coach. So did everyone else. Um, but obviously, we saw that uh, the, the results were, were not coming, and not only the president uh, acted on it, but the worrying factor for the players as well. So, no one likes losing, especially as a professional footballer. To lose games where you know you're supposed to win, um, surely there are problems, you know. And we 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 tried, you know, we tried our level best. I mean, there were games where we were supposed to lose and came back from. Because you know we we made sure that we leave everything on the field, but it wasn't it wasn't to be. I guess with the coach coach Falls, or for sure, or should I say, as we called him, but um, a really really good coach. Um, I, I can't really say what. Um, Mido, you you you've been coached by by amazing coaches your entire career. You've gone from team to team, be it at Sundowns, Chiefs, you know, yeah. um, even down in Cape Town. So you're looking at all that, and honestly, you're coming here, you you think, and, and I'll take your word, because he's never coached me. Yeah. You think, and through your experience, Romain Falls is a good coach. He's a good coach. I mean, there are games where, like I said, where we came from behind, from away, you know, and the players also, you know, need credit for that. Also, mm. I, I can't really say he's a bad coach, or he's a terrible coach, or he's the worst coach that has coached me, um, no. But uh, he's a good coach, and there's a reason why the president uh, brought him in. You know, like I said, mm. it doesn't make me the results were not uh, forthcoming. And uh, yeah, you know, some of the players will let go, the coach as well, but it's not my department. You know. uh, then now you've got a new coach again um, that's taken over. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's still early on in the season, so I can imagine settling in South Africa, especially when he's not a coach that's been here before. What can you tell us about your new coach? Uh, Pablo Franco Martin. Uh, Spanish uh, has history. He's known for playing good football. Um, he's, uh, he's a very good coach as well. And we have learned so much, I think. 
uh, it is very evident. Um, obviously, not the best of starts, uh, but I think our result and even the way we play uh, just really shows what uh, Coach Pablo has, has brought in, you know, for 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 Yamazul FC. And uh, the the one word I really want to emphasize on is is foundation. Mm. You know, he he has set a platform, you know, from the get go to say what he wants, the type of person, type of coach um, he is, you know, and he doesn't really stick to football. Look, all the aspects and billowing, you know, that that uh, obviously directed football as well. But uh, an amazing guy uh, with his technical team. And it's, it's been good so far. So I, I really hope and wish that we're able to, to do more or get something from all the hard work we've been doing with the coach so far. And like I said, it's evident. We're playing much better football now. Um, uh, and hmm. I think they got good spirits. Let's take a quick break. I know we do have to let you go by half past. There is a meeting to attend to, but let's take a quick break. 24 after the hour six on the Mighty Metro FM. There is currently rugby ongoing. It's Uruguay versus Namibia. Namibia might just get it. They might just win their first ever World Cup match. Uh, they're leading 20 to 12 at the moment. Remember that their coach, a South African man, is the man at the helm there. 24 after the hour six on the Mighty Metro FM. And we do have George Malulega, Amazulu midfielder, who is with us. Mido, I'm looking at uh, this season. Under the new coach, um, whom you 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 say you you enjoying playing under, but there yeah. isn't much playing uh, as far as Amido is concerned. Seven games so far that you guys have played, struggled to score a goal even in the third in the first three matches. You couldn't get a victory in the first three matches, but you only start. You've only played two games so far in the seven. Um, right. Nothing in the last two. Nothing in the first three. What 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 would you think perhaps that is related to? Uh, I, I did get an injury, uh, just to mention, I got an injury, freak accident, my toe, uh, during preseason, mm. and I missed, this. that's why I missed the first three games, Yeah, uh, I had, my toe was broken, and I had to sit out, uh, the other games I, I played as well, I came on as a five against the Kaiser Chiefs, yeah, Chiefs and Amazon, and, and uh, TS Galaxy, oh sorry, sorry, I mean Chiefs and TS yeah. Galaxy, is the two games yeah. that you played, um, yeah, I was, I was back uh, in those games, and then I tore my quad after the TS Galaxy game. So that's how you missed Cape Town and Bulogwan. That is correct. So I was, I was back. I was I was actually back for Bulogwan, but they did not want to risk it. Um, so I missed Bulogwan to be available for Morocco Solos. So this season already, you've been injured twice. Yes. But lazy it's other things, you know. A lot of things happen in life. You know, I lost my sister. I remember, yes. Uh, exactly, uh, almost three months ago. So, uh, you know, in those events, in those scenes, uh, uh, all of those still need to take place. You know, so I, I am still vulnerable at the moment. So I think that is why. Are you going to ask for time to go and do those things? Um I mean, I can imagine you have a very understanding boss when it comes to traditional matters. Yeah, correct. But uh, also there are games that need to be played, you know, and these are very important games. So time time is very tight. But I think there is a break coming along. Um, I don't know. We'll see if, if that will allow. But, uh, yeah, hopefully all of that goes, goes, goes accordingly and we can focus on the season ahead. So, I mean, to, to uh, and Minana was Kulma because, you know, we're assuming that everybody understands what we're saying, but we live in a very multicultural Correct. dimension. <laughs> so, to put it bluntly, you need to go home uh, uh, to do traditional uh, uh, things in order to <coughs> reinstate Ukunisa yourself again, because at the moment you are left vulnerable by the, uh, what's happened at home with the uh, passing yeah, of your sister. Because because of the person of my sister, so uh, I need to be cleansed. And that, you believe, works against you when it comes to um, being vulnerable to whatever it is that anybody else or whatever the earth or the, the universe might throw at you? Correct. All right. Listen, Mido, this was a very brief conversation to catch up on you um, and see what you're doing and see how the season is going for you. Looking at your squad... And the reinforcement that you guys have just made, particularly from Pirates. Do you ever look at your competition around you and feel like your position is threatened? Uh, not at all. 
I think uh, everything is out there for the taking. I trust myself. I know my capabilities. As much as we are colleagues, at the end of the day, it is competition. But at the same time, that just betters the team. So when everyone competes and tries their level best. So when you hear a hey, Ben Motswara is joining, you don't say, hey, what does that mean for me? Well, it's a, it's a, I'm saying it's a good thing for the team, you know. But for me, um, obviously it is uh, my position is, is, is under threat. But for me, I'm just actually very happy because it's just an added um, a number that will add value. I know you're busy with a lot of things. I need to let you go and uh, to go to attend your meeting. But I know there's a lot that you're doing. I mean, I, I go in and around Timbisa. I go in and around townships. What is it that you're busy with? What is it that you're doing that uh, people can always follow you on? Yeah, we um, I actually have a foundation, the George Malulega Foundation. Uh, I do a lot of tournaments, you know, do a lot of uh, initiatives with uh, the kids or your homes uh, around Timbisa. I'm trying to do that uh, countrywide. Um, I am involved in the engine knockout. I'm the ambassador of the engine knockout uh, challenge, mm. which I played in in 2002, 2003, excuse me. And it's been 21 years, so uh, I am in the ambassador, and we are trying to make sure that we, we better the community and the players, you know, give all the youngsters the opportunity that I, I came across and uh, see if we can find more, more talented players, you know, male and female. So the engine is really close to my heart. And uh, I just really like how it, it has developed and grown through the years. Listen, uh, Ben, Gunento Zabantu, Gunama Injari. So when you do come back, a castle or Shaba or Shabby Puvesi, now because you'll be there. I appreciate you, boy. Thank you, Andile. Mido, George Marilega, Amazulu midfielder. Crazy, huh? Two injuries already. I, I don't need to tell you what he said. You heard what he said. You you can read into that what you will. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, uh, I'll give you the starting 11 of the teams that have released them so far. Games kicking off in an hour from now. And then we're going to cross through to um, Oma Okaktuba, who's out in Europe. Because we as Africans agree on one thing. And this is our own fault. Our leagues do not pay anywhere near what the top five leagues in Europe pay. That, that's, that's for sure. You will never be seen or recognized as one of the best players in world football playing in any of the African leagues. That's for sure. Success in football, and I'm talking about worldly, universal success, is given to those that ply their trade in Europe. This is a fact. So therefore, we do want our most talented, our best talented, to go to Europe and play. But what we open them up for, and if you've ever traveled outside of Africa, you will know that what we open them up for is something that they need all the money they're going to be making there just to pay for the therapy. Just to pay for the therapy. What happened to Victor Osimhen, if you haven't seen it, get onto social media. His own team He's suing his own team that he plays for. For racially abusing him on the internet. It's disgusting. It's 6.34 on the Mighty Metro FM. This is the biggest platform for all things sport in Southern Africa. And it is also one of those things that uh, sport gathers us as Africans. We are in competition. Yes, we are. When we put our own colors and flags and national anthems and go against each other. But... As most Africans, we follow other Africans in European leagues. We go out to see what are they doing, how well are they doing. We track Nigerians, we track um, Ghanaians, we track um, everybody that's out there plying their trade from Africa. They raise Africa's flag as well as their own country's flag. So when we see what happened last night, what happened over the last 24 hours with Victor Osimeni, it raises the temperature of Africa because... Why are we sending Africa's children into a pot of boiling oil that does not want them? It spits them out once it feels they've done enough. What Europe consistently does to Africa's kids is wrong. Rafila Jane, the captain of Banyana Banyana, was here on the show. And she told us her experiences playing for Inter. She told us how she was treated over and over and over again. You assume this is fans, this is opposition, and you accept it as a rivalry of football. 
But when it's home, when it's home, no ways, man. Ladies and gentlemen, please assist me in uh, welcoming Omar Akakdugba, UEFA journalist and founder of Omar Sports, the best there is when it comes to Africans covering football across the world. And trust me, not even Euro journalists get as close as what Omar does. Omar, welcome to the show. Always a great pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Thank you always for the beautiful introduction. I appreciate it. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Omar, I saw your fury um, on, yes. on, on, on social media because not only is this somebody very close to you, but this is a topic that is close to most of us Africans. For those that might have missed it, the ones that yeah. are listening to the show and going back now and looking for it, please just give us a blow-by-blow blow account of what transpired in Napoli. Um, he missed a penalty against Bologna. The next day, <laughs> a video popped up on TikTok from the official handle of Napoli Football Club, basically making a joke of their best player, their most important player, for missing a penalty. And that didn't go down well with, you know, a lot of us, and of course many people on social media, Nigerians, and of course many people around the world. And not just one, two. One, the other one, basically talking about him being a coconut or having a coconut head. It was very unbelievable. So that's basically what happened. And it it didn't come across as something very, very nice. It came across as something very disrespectful. And a lot of persons have, you know, gone you know, gone about with the racist um, cards. But you can't blame them because of history. It, it leaves history with, with racism. Listen, even if you don't believe that the penalty miss video that they did, because they were, you know, basically taunting him with that one, but the coconut yes. one, which was uh, yes. the first one to go up, that one was definitely, most definitely, without a shadow of doubt, the most racist thing I've ever seen a club put of its own player. They even put their coconut there. They used his face against it. That was disgusting. Yes, exactly. And and the thing about racism is, at the end of the day, it's not what you do or your intention. It's how he makes the other person feel, right? Mm, mm. Because some people will say, some people will say, I'm not racist. It's not my intention. But that's that's how I feel. I feel discriminated against. I feel that you're using racial slurs against me. So. I don't know what the intention is, but the message is sent across is the most important thing. And just like you said, it's, 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 it's very, very, I mean, it has racial undertone. Again, the reason why I might accelerate Napoli, for example, is that the city of Napoli itself, they don't see themselves as Italians. They know that Italy has this reputation of racism. But in Napoli, they pride themselves as the most unracist part of Italy. And I have experienced it personally, to be fair. The friendliness, the the hospitality of the people of Naples, how open they are, and, and the fact that they don't discriminate. You know, And so that's why this comes as a very huge surprise to me. Because I can speak for these people, I can speak for the fans of Napoli, because they love Victor so much. We have seen videos, you've seen a lot of videos, of how much they idolize Victor in that city. So this is, is is something that we can't understand. And I reached out to the club and I said to them that I cannot possibly understand that you guys would throw your own player. So maybe you can make me understand the rationale behind the video. I've not gotten a reply, but I wanted to understand from the club's perspective why they did that. And up till this moment, bro, there's no official statement from the club. And that's that's not something good. All they did was delete the videos, but they've made no official statement at all. Exactly, exactly. Not exactly. condemning and, and it, not nothing. That raises questions. Because if you truly care about the player and how the people who love the player feel, you must come out to clarify, to give people closure, to give people that feeling of, okay, it's not what we thought. At least, even if you, you're, not, you're being politically correct, but do something, you get. Unfortunately, nothing has been done, and of course that underscores basically the what has what how the relationship between the player and the club has has has, has, has really gone sour, you know. 
Uh, the player has not renewed his contract. They've been going back and forth. A lot is going on that we may not want to talk about on uh, on the uh, on the radio. But if you read between the lines, you'll see or within the between the lines, correct? You'll see that things are not really going well. And the post completely is a, it completely tells you what has been going on behind the scenes. Just to paint a picture uh, um, for those that don't follow Italian football, uh, we don't get Italian football yes. uh, much here in South Africa. How important has Victor Semini been to Napoli? <laughs> Absolutely important. As important as Maradona was 33 years ago. Hmm. Because why is Maradona idolized? He he led an unknown club like Napoli to win the European, I mean the Italian league title. Napoli is not a club synonymous with winning titles. But Maradona made that happen. And 33 years after, they didn't do that until Victor Osimhen joined this club. Now, for context, they've had great players. In fact, greater players like Gonzalo Higuain, Edison Cavani, and the likes. They didn't achieve this. But Victor came, scored over 33 goals in all competitions, mm. became the top scorer in the league, and was not just a goal scorer, was a leader was a pivotal player, was a very important part of the spine of the Napoli team. And then they won this good the first time in 33 Omar, years. just hold it there for me. That I want to take a quick club. break. I want to take a quick break. It's 1844 on the Mighty Metro FM. You are listening to Sports that Amplified with Andy Le. I am Andy Lengube. On the line, a friend of the room, Omar Akakdugba, UEFA journalist and founder of Omar Sports. Please do follow him on Twitter, especially Omar Akakdugba, but across all social media. He is on the front lines of everything football across Europe and in Africa. Omar, I mean, we're talking about the mammoth task that Victor had signing for Napoli, but also how well he's done since he got there. Yes, of course. Uh, like I said, he, he, he led them to win their first title in 33 years mm. and, of course, make this club very famous not just in Nigeria, but across the continent. Before now, I mean, people really didn't care about Napoli. If you talk about Italian football, you're looking at AC Milan, Inter Milan, Rome, AS Roma, Juventus. No one talks about Napoli. But Victor has put Napoli on the pedestal. And not just putting them on the pedestal, making them one of the most respected clubs in the world. Look at what they did in the Champions League. They were this close to reaching the semi-final. In fact... They couldn't cross the set, the quarterfinal because Victor was injured. You understand? So that's how important Victor is to this team. And it's it's absurd to see the club treat such a player in the manner they've done and to not even come out to even clarify, even make things worse. But hey, these are the things that we, we see every time and it's no surprise, like, like you said. Um, I know you've reached out to... Um, the player. I know you've had conversations sure. with the player. How is he? Sure. He's not happy. He's not happy. <laughs> He's not happy. He's, 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 he can't believe what has happened. He can't believe what has happened. Uh, sorry, I will not reveal the things we've talked about on, of course. on the radio, but I can just tell you he's not happy. He's not happy and he is looking for the best way to solve, solve the, uh, to sort out things so that everyone can can have peace uh, because at the end of the day Napoli is still his employer and they have to find an amicable you know solution at the end of the day the the, the, the bone of contention is the extension of his contract you understand is the that that discussion has stalled for quite a long time they've not reached an agreement the fans are anxious they want Victor to stay in Napoli forever but they know somewhere in their heart that this is not possible it's football Sometimes the player must have to go, like we've seen in the past with Edinson Cavani, Iguain, Amsi, and the likes who pass through Napoli. Napoli is a place you go through and then move on to bigger things. But with Victor, they don't want to let go. And that is why you have all of these emotions and all the drama around Victor Simen at, at Napoli. Yeah, um, he went to training this uh, this morning. We saw the videos of him going yes, in after yes. that. And he yes. obviously, you know, attitude was different. His yes. body demeanor yes. was different. Yes. I can exactly. imagine how difficult that must have been. Because also, not only has the club said nothing, you've had 
all the players uh, say nothing. You've had all the exactly. assistants say exactly. nothing. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and I have checked. I know a lot of media people from Napoli. I have been searching the internet. No one have said anything against what the club did because if they do, maybe they will not be allowed to come around the club. They will not be giving media accreditations to attend matches. As I'm speaking to you right now, my next media accreditation for Napoli games uh, uh, is at risk. I must be honest with you. I have applied for the game against Real Madrid. I'm waiting for a no because everything I say is monitored vigorously by the media department of Napoli. They've contacted me a couple of times to take back my tweet or my words, and I know this, and I know how these people are. So it's unfortunate no player, no teammates, no media person, not even the club. So you can tell where they belong to. And this boy knows, bro, he knows. Listen, we see football on the pitch, we see 11 players, we say it's a team. It's a team by the nomenclature. But in most cases, it's not a team. Football is... It's a jungle. It's cruel. It looks beautiful on the outside, but inside is quite dirty. And there are things that, like I said again, like I, I will say again, we can't say on the radio, bro. Things happen. Things happen. Because sometimes your teammates are jealous. Like, hey, how is he taking all the shine? Okay, he's scoring all the goals. He's getting all the awards. Without us, maybe he can't even do it. So you see that attitude being displayed off the pitch in the dressing room things you don't see on the pitch we being close to a lot of players we hear a lot of things that we can't even say on, on, the, on the public uh, um, space oh my listen we're going to keep a close um, eye on this one and we're going to you know we're going to keep speaking about the African story because it is yes. not what is right that should be done but it is what is decent um, and what is decent is that humanity exactly. treats each other the way that they should listen before exactly. I let you go before exactly. I let you go uh, congratulations, yes. Lionel Efe Akadugba has come Thank to the world. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations, Thank you so man. Much. Um, and uh, we wish Thank you and the you. little Thank one you. all the best, yeah? And apologies to all Ronaldo fans. We should be best. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're banned from here. Goodbye. Oh, my God, Tugba, ladies and gentlemen. Follow him on social media. He's just welcomed the new baby uh, boy, Lionel Efeka Tugba. Of course, Lionel, named after uh, Lionel Messi, uh, whom he's a huge fan of. 1850. Let's take a break. When we come back, uh, you can comment and give us a call. On all the conversations we've had, we spoke to Mido, uh, George Malulega, a little bit earlier. We spoke to Omar on all things happening in Napoli at the moment. And then I'll read to you the starting 11s that have been released from the teams that are on action tonight. Uh, there is two games in the DSTV Premiership. And I'm watching the screens. 12-23. That's the score. Namibia, more points at this point. 46 have been played in minutes. We could see Alistair Kutia and Namibia make history and win their very first ever after the humiliation they suffered we could see them win their very first ever world cup match let's take a break it's 18.52 let's uh, go into the games uh, let me see uh Still 12-23, yeah? Still 12-23, Namibia on course uh, to making history there. But let me give you the starting 11s. Uh, let's start with Kaiser Chiefs. I've just opened it up in front of me. Kaiser Chiefs have started with Peterson in goals. They've got Dove. Uh, they've got Ditlokwe. They've got uh, Njabulo Ngobo, Frosler, Mart Castillo, Matlo, Saile comes in, uh, starts. You've got Dupree and Modi. That's the 11. That's the 11. So I'm looking at the bench and I've had to ask Timmy to say, what's wrong with Gonzalez? Because he's not in the 11 and he's not on the bench. Kune sits on the bench. Okay, that's Mulef Nseki's side. That's Mulef Nseki's side and who they've decided to go with. I've been trying to find Kukune here, but uh, I'm not sure if they've posted it yet. Um, the 11, that is. But I, Oh, there it is. Um, Sukune have got uh, Sangari in goal. Mobi, Mabota, Kadoso. You've got uh, Chibwabwa. You've got uh, Mokojo, Makwana, Weba, Ohizu, Mkize, and Bwalia. That's a starting 11 that they've gone with this evening. So if you're going to comment on any of those starting 11s of your teams or anything that we've spoken about on the show so far, please do call us on 86 2160 WhatsApp on 60 Sundowns. 
They've gone with uh, Peter in goal, giving a rest to Ronald Williams. You've got uh, Onyango even on the bench. So, yeah, he's not in the team. You've got Kekana, Libusa, Mvala, Kutsia, Zungu, uh, Mudiba Maseko, Mendieta, Morena, and Shalulile. That's the team that Sundowns have gone with for their clash this evening. They're going to be taking on, of course, uh, Stellenbosch. And let's take a look at what the Stellies have done as far as their starting 11 is concerned. You've got Stevens in goal, uh, Moloisa Nesibande, Jurgens, Dulim Kaba, um, Kaka, uh, Palace, De Jong, Ora, and Titus. Let's go straight to your voice notes. And then coming up, we'll take some of your calls. Tolisa, I see you and we'll go to you. Call us on 0860-002160. Drop us a voice note on 060-552-7303 now. Uh, good evening, Andile. Uh, Solomon Mulepa from Alexandra. Uh, Andile, I think, uh, after the uh, DSCB Premiership, I think it's a good thing. 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 I think it's a Liki Fedi Lerjolago MTN, Liki Rasi Wini, Net Banger Rasi Wini, Coscan and Banker of a Tidy Team Jaja, Mutsepe Lik, so I. And El Chilichi Jesus Dono Wina, Dango. Evening, Miss Andy, yes, Persian Dusan from Divan. Yeah, talking about the racism in Italy, in this case of Omin in uh, Naples, I agree with him about swing the yeah. team. And I think you can ask for a, a immediate release to and find another club to play for, uh, even maybe better yeah. out of Italy. Yeah, it's the high time now that uh, this European they start to respect the African players. Yeah, and coming yeah. to me, yeah, it's refreshing to hear about him, and uh, uh, I wish him all the best in the coming uh, games. Yeah, well, what a talent, and I, I hope his discipline is pressing to his team at, at Amazon. And giving back to the community, I appreciate a lot what he's doing. I hope he can come around my neighborhood, the range farm here. Yeah, because we're lacking a lot of uh, uh, things in, in football development. Yeah, and wish you, your team and your show all the best. Big up to your show. Thank you so much. Uh, Chiu, it's, it's, it's becoming a tight affair now. And I maybe you're playing with a yellow card at the moment. Uh, it's about eight minutes to go on that yellow card. And it's 1923. Uh, try scored by Uruguay means that it's a little closer and a little tighter than we expected. I'd love to see a victory for Namibia. They've never tasted a victory at the World Cup. Uh, with the South African coach as well, it would be great to see that. Uh, here's a stat from Opta Jabu. Follow at Opta Jabu. He says, given him Simango dropped to the bench tonight, it ends a run of 60 straight games starting and finishing games. That is unbelievable. That is absolutely unbelievable. 60 straight games starting and finishing. And today, He's dropped to the bench as Msimango for Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, let's go to Tolisa. Tolisa's out in uh, Omonde, it is? Oh, in Johannesburg. Wants to speak about Mido. Tolisa. I'm in Joburg. Tolisa. Hey, how are you, sir? Yeah, no, I'm good, man. You're out in Joburg. You want to speak about Mido? Yes, yes, yes. I'm very happy that uh, Mido is doing well and his health is okay. We all want to see him playing football on the, on the, on the field of play. Um, I listened to him when you asked him how, how Fort Loza was as a coach, and he said... Forsosa was a very good coach. Mm, I honestly doubt if he would have said he was a bad coach sure. if he was bad, because this is a, a national radio station. I don't think he would have said that. So you basically say you don't believe him? I, I don't believe him. I honestly don't believe him. <laughs> Why? Why, Tolisa? Because, because he knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> Alisa, out to Johannesburg. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Peter wants to speak about Kaiser Chiefs. Oh, hi, Apollo Kwane. Peter. Andy, how are you? Hey, how are you? Ah, I'm going to talk to you. Hmm. What are you going to Ah, Andy, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. What do you mean? Sometimes you, need, sometimes you need to sit back as a player and notice the mistakes that you've made so that you can correct them. Let, let, let's say Ngezana, for instance. There was a time when he was benched, and I think he rectified his own mistakes. Obana Peterson deserves to be to sit on the bench. Our guy could a chance. Our guy over a chance. From the bench, he will see his mistakes and he will improve. Otherwise, cafe favoritism. What's our favor? Let us feel one of our one a day and then relax. Thank you, Andy. 
Hmm. All right, so I hear you. Peterson, starting for Kaiser Chiefs, not a favorite decision there uh, that has been made by a coach, Emile Fintzeki, um, in favor of a Dumilin Kuna who's on the bench. Unfortunately, you can't take any more of your calls. I'll get a good idea. I can tell you now, breaking news. Um, the team lineup for South Africa, number 10. You should have seen your eyes when I said that. Not, 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 not that sort of news, sports news. Andre Pollard starts at 10 in our next match. Yep. Starts at 10. Manny Liebach moves to the subs bench. That is the big breaking news. Uh, Kanan Moody also starts this match here. It's going to be an interesting one. Got to get out of here. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. I'll see you later on Sport at 10, SABC 1, 10 o'clock. My name is Andy Lengube. Thank you to the Lights at Cam... Uh, at, what is it? Lights, Camera, Action. Yeah, there you go. The crew that makes sure that you're able to see this and uh, get it as a podcast later. Timmy. Pela, pela. And so on.